Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm going to be showing you my quick and easy technique for replanting hydroponic Dutch bucket systems with tomatoes. And we'll also be pulling down and examining the bag substrates, so the cocoa and the rock wool, within the wick wedge and the rock wedge hydroponic systems. So a complete reset of the greenhouse, as well as a look at those substrates and how they've performed over the grows. First up, the Dutch bucket planting method. So we're going to remove any fruit that's on the existing plants before we take them down. I've actually been running these buckets with a water and hydrogen peroxide solutions. That washes out any excess nutrients, as well as this allows us to reduce our handling of the perlite to just removing what root matter is in there. So I've been propagating these tomatoes for a few weeks and I've been using 42 millimeter cocoa jiffy peat pellets. Now these are covered in paper and I'm more than happy putting these into a Dutch bucket system with perlite because the roots will just take over all of that cocoa. These were propagated underneath a Spider Farmer SF600 and it's just a 60 watt full spectrum grow light. It gives me some really nice results. Now, this is the method that I've wanted to show you because there are lots of different ways of cleaning the roots off and I found that this method is the easiest and the quickest for me. So I was doing it in a wheelbarrow before this where you would actually have to shovel the perlite back into the Dutch buckets. But using this flexible tub method where you can just dump that Beto bucket into the rubberized tub, remove any of the roots that you need to remove, and then use the handles to funnel that perlite back into your Dutch bucket. Now, the reason I'm not rinsing is because I've been running this system with a water and hydrogen peroxide solution to kill any of the algae and also to wash out any of the hydroponic salts that have built up. We're just going to plant our Jiffy pellets straight in to this perlite and we'll drop it straight into our Dutch bucket system. Now, because I've got those 3D printable clips on the corners, as you can see, it makes it really easy to disconnect the bucket from the system and then just dump it, plant it out, and then return it back to the system. Each bucket takes less than a minute to complete and it just removes that mental hurdle that you have changing over all your plants. Now, these tomatoes are at the perfect stage of planting. You can see that the roots are just escaping the bottom of that Jiffy Peat pellet and the plant is really healthy. The green just speaks for itself. There's no need to overcomplicate planting. You just push the perlite aside and plant it as if you were planting in soil. We can then return the bucket to the system and attach the hose to the 3D printable clips on the back of the Beto bucket system. It's as simple as that, a minute per bucket, and your system is back up and running and you can run full nutrient. So having tackled the Beto buckets, we can move on to removing the tops of the Wick Wedge hydroponic system. So I'll collect up all the tomatoes, cut down the plants and refresh the system. So these have actually performed exceedingly well. The Wick Wedge hydroponic system is one of the hydroponic systems that I would highly recommend if you have access to cheap cocoa in your area. So let's have a look in the bags themselves and see what's going on underneath that plastic. I was really excited to open this up and as you can see, the roots have explored most of the cocoa, especially towards the bottom where obviously the wicking action occurs more, but the whole bag is actually wet. So that's really exciting and it got me excited for the rock wedge hydroponic system that we're about to look at now. The reason I'm so enthusiastic about this system is because I can get these slabs of rock wool really cheap 
and it's proved just as effective as the wick wedge hydroponic system, which is unfortunately more expensive to run due to the cocoa itself being really expensive. So you'll notice here that not only do the roots explore the bagged media, but the channel itself underneath, they follow the wicks down into the rain gutter grow system and have a look at those roots. So let's have a look if they're exploring the media as well. As far as I'm concerned, the roots can do whatever they like, as long as the system is performing well. I actually think this system is giving the roots a dual root zone. So the top of the rock wool is actually slightly dry. The bottom is wet, soaked actually, and the water underneath, the hydroponic nutrient underneath, is allowing the roots to suck up whatever they like. And this is giving the roots access to air in the rock wool, as well as full nutrition and water through that channel underneath. And as you can see, the roots are actually targeting those wicks. So they're running through the rock wool slab and penetrating throughout that slab getting access to oxygen and water because rock wool tends to have a really good oxygen to water ratio. And they're also concentrating on the nutrient solution in the channel below at the same time. That was actually an unexpected byproduct of the system. I should have foreseen that because the plants in the wick wedge hydroponic system do exactly the same thing. They will explore the media and send a ton of roots down the wicks and into that rain gutter grow system below. But the media is being used here and I'm not really going to attempt to stop those roots going down into that bottom system. The only negative it can have is that it blocks the float valve from operating and you just need to keep an eye on that fact. Now this is pretty violent, but I do love plants. You'll just have to take my word for it. Let me show you what I mean by the roots blocking the float valve. Now I did have to clear the roots away one time during this grow, but have a go at how healthy these roots are. Now you have to remember that there is absolutely no extra aeration within these channels. But as you can see, there is no evidence of pythium or root rot. The roots are extremely healthy. And I think this is testament to the fact that uh, the nutrient is being topped up so fast because they're utilizing uh, it so fast. It never gets old. Look at that. Oh, it smells good too. Like that watermelony fresh. It's like one of those um, ring pops you get from the footy, the footy kiosk. The watermelon ones. It's a good smell. And will you have a look at that greenhouse? So much space for exciting new experiments and heaps more episodes of Hucho's to come. I've been loving the Dutch bucket technique and I'll be keeping the Dutch buckets around, but we'll be expanding outside of this greenhouse with our vertical hydroponic systems in the not too distant future. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hucho's. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Hucho's. Falls into camera. <laughs>